Infinity is conceptually difficult because it seems out of reach. You can't put your finger on it. Students are told that infinity is not a real number on the number line, but somehow going to larger and larger numbers approaches infinity. So in some sense, it must be thought of as beyond the end of the number line. But this conflicts with your correct intuition that the number line is endless. This creates a conundrum. If infinity is not on the number line, where can you picture it? Where can you file it away in your brain? The concept of infinity is thus left floating indefinitely out there somewhere, but also, in a sense, nowhere. The conceptual problem becomes even more confusing in later math classes when the discussion turns to the point at infinity, or neighborhoods of infinity, or functions that wrap around at infinity. One example of wrapping around at infinity that immediately comes to mind is the tangent function, which repeatedly zips off toward positive infinity as the angle increases, then somehow wraps around and returns from negative infinity. Another example is the transformation of a conic section from an ellipse into a hyperbola. As the focal points spread apart, the curve transforms from a circle to an increasingly elongated ellipse, and then somehow it wraps around infinity and produces a two-branched curve like an inverted ellipse. What I would like to do is offer an alternative way to visualize the real numbers that allows you to visualize infinity concretely, so you can literally put your finger on the point at infinity. There's a well-known construction that is used to show a one-to-one -one correspondence between the set of all points on a line and the points in a finite open interval. First, wrap the open interval into a circle with the endpoints meeting at the top, which we will call point P, and place it tangent to the number line at the origin. A line from P to any point A on the number line intersects the circle at some point, which we can call A prime. Therefore, every point on the number line is matched to a corresponding point on the circle. Reversing this, a line from P to any other point on the circle, which we can call B, will intersect the number line at some point, which we can label B prime. This construction, therefore, defines a one-to-one -one correspondence between the original open interval and the points on the line. The only point on the circle not corresponding to any point on the line is the point P itself. A line through P that avoids intersecting any other point on the circle would be parallel to the number line. Notice that the circle in this construction, minus point P at the top, can be seen as an alternative way to visualize the real number system. If the points on the circle are seen as representing the same real numbers as their counterparts on the number line, the numbers appear to crunch closer together for larger numbers, but no numbers are missing or out of order. The distortion can be likened to a number line as seen in some kind of a bizarre fisheye lens. Here's where the magic happens. Point P represents infinity. It's on the circle, but it does not represent any real number, because it doesn't correspond to any point on the number line. And yet there it is. You can put your finger on it. P is a boundary point for the set, but it's not a member of the set. In this model of the real numbers, it's easy to talk about the concept of wrapping around from the positive to the negative real numbers through infinity. There's nothing new in this construction. I'm simply pointing out that it has a usefulness that's easy to miss. I've found that students readily accept this as an alternate representation of the real number system to supplement the conventional representation as an infinite straight line. There is something special about being able to actually point to infinity without vague hand-waving gestures or feeling like infinity is way out there in some unreachable place. If you're a teacher, try this with your classes. And check out my website, mathwithoutborders.com. On the site menu, I have a bonus topics tab with a collection of free videos and activities such as this one on topics of general interest. If you like this video, like, subscribe, leave a comment, and share it with others.